If you've ever played Salmon Run, then you know Mr. Grizz is obsessed with golden eggs. In the previous video, which you should totally check out if you haven't already, we talked about how the golden eggs are a compact energy source produced by goldies. But then we were left wondering, what is Mr. Grizz doing with all these eggs? Maybe he just wants them for their energy? Or is there something more? To answer these questions, we must look into the only lead we have, the producers of the golden eggs. What are the goldies, and what can they tell us about the potential uses of their eggs? A goldie's the weakest boss salmon it, duh. Yeah, we know that, but is that all there is to a goldie? We already know that one unique thing about them is that they're the only salmonid known to produce golden eggs. But do all golden eggs hatch into goldies? If we turn to the Grisco manual, we can find out that goldies are an extremely rare salmonid. Only one out of 10,000 hatchlings is a goldie. This means that on very rare occasions, a non-goldie salmonid will lay a golden egg, or at the very least, produce a glowing salmon baby. What is this, My Hero Academia? But it could also mean that only one out of every 10,000 goldie eggs will grow into a goldie. While the first explanation makes sense for the existence of goldies in general, we don't have enough information to figure out what the golden eggs hatch into. So we'll just have to assume that there's two possible scenarios, neither of which change the possible use of the golden eggs. Don't worry, it's all gonna make sense at the end. The first, which I'll call the certain scenario, is where every golden egg will hatch into a goldie. And the second uncertain scenario, is where only 1 in 10,000 golden egg hatchlings will be a goldie. Now put those odds aside and focus on the fact that the manual described goldies as salmonids. This tells us that the goldie isn't its own species, but rather a very rare breed or mutation of salmonid. Similar to how there's many different breeds of dogs, it is very likely that there are other breeds or mutations that occur in the hatchlings, resulting in various other boss salmonids such as the steelhead and maws. Note that all the other bosses are just lesser salmonids with nice tech. Steelheads for instance have ink resistant scales and explosive saliva. Maws can swim in ink and scale walls. These three bosses, the maws, steelhead and goldie, all possess some traits that make them significantly different from all other salmonids. And apart from their appearance, one trait is mammalian and the other is fishy. Maws are similar to sharks in appearance, however, they possess the lure of an anglerfish. They also use echolocation to find their prey, a trait that dolphins, which are mammals, exhibit. Steelheads have a much darker skin and smaller eyes, but also come with super hard scales similar to those of the arapaima fish, who use it as protection against piranhas. They also have explosive saliva, which, sans the C4, is a trait of land mammals. However, when it comes to the goldie, the traits it receives are superior intelligence and longevity? It even says so in the manual. And while these traits don't make the goldie fit for a battlefield, they're enough to make it crucial for the success of salmonid society. You see, longevity and intelligence are both great traits to engender creativity and innovation. Due to their longer life expectancy, goldies can spend more time learning and experimenting with new ideas, and eventually create new technologies. Something important to note is that innovation has been proven to increase the overall quality of life. It may come in terms of better medicine, better infrastructure, or better tools. For instance, in the Grisco manual, we can see that the flyfish is the latest weapon model from leading salmonid engineers. A new flying suit gives small fry enormous protection from squids and octolings, and it also gives them an easier means of defeating their enemies. This not-so-simple tech improves the likelihood that a small fry survives, and also boosts how effective it is in the battlefield. Technological innovation, boosting their quality of life. Now, as you may have guessed by this point, the leading salmonid engineers that the manual speaks of are likely all goldies. This can also explain why goldies are dressed so differently from lesser salmonid, even if they possess the same attack patterns. As inventors and holders of knowledge, goldies likely hold a higher social and economic status in salmonid society. They're adorned with rings and fancy garb, which might be worn as an additional status symbol, or conspicuous consumption if you want to use the fancy words. Either way you look at it, a goldie is a very important salmonid. So why would Mr. Grizz want a bunch of their eggs? They could be used to power technology, yes, but what about when they hatch and grow into goldies? Could Mr. Grizz be profiting from their intelligence by making a giant think tank of goldies or something? One major change between Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2 was the huge overhaul of every special, except for the bomb launcher. The moment the old specials were deemed illegal, design companies had to step up and invent brand new specials. Yet, is it just me, or do a lot of these special resemble the attacks of Boss Salmonid? Could it be that the minds behind these specials are the very same minds that build the Boss Salmonid tech? It is possible that the think tank of goalies controlled by Mr. Grizz is responsible for the majority of new specials we have seen. 
Heck, even some of the brand new additions resemble salmon attack. Just look at the torpedo and booyah bomb. Sadly, we have no proof of this. However, this is just one theory of the potential use of the golden eggs. Another is for them to be used purely as an energy source. After all, it's well known that there's an energy shortage in the world of Splatoon. Had it not been for the great Zapfish, the Inkopolis we know and love today might not even exist. However, Octarians and Octolings are left to struggle for power sources. We already know that they trade with Salmonids for power eggs which provide them with some form of energy, but could Mr. Grizz be selling them golden eggs, a much much better source of energy, in exchange for technology and workers? And when the eggs hatch, maybe Octarians send the Salmonids back home in exchange for more power eggs. Oh look Salmonids, we rescued this many of your kin from the clutches of Mr. Grizz. My final theory is that Mr. Grizz is trying to create another Zapfish. And this one might not be as crazy as it seems. While Goldies are a form of Salmonids whose mammalian quality is its intelligence, we've yet to discuss their fishy qualities. And no, it's not their bioluminescence. The glow of a Goldie isn't like that of other bioluminescent fish, who are usually found in the deep trenches of the ocean. Those fish only have a small part of their body which glows to attract prey. And if you look at the steelhead and maws, you can see that their change of physical appearance is only one of two piscatory changes. The glow of the Goldie likely comes from its golden scales, which either emit or reflect light really well. However, that's just a cosmetic difference. What I believe to be the Goldie's second fishy trait is their whiskers, which can be seen on the underside of their mouths. Babasco, that's just another physical change. Exactly, however, it follows the pattern observed in maws and steelheads. A shark-like body and darker skin only make the bosses look different. However, the elysium of the maws and the tough scales of the steelhead affect how their attack patterns work. So you might think, well, the Goldie's glow affects its attack pattern, since it makes happy little workers charge directly at them. What could Whiskers possibly do for the Goldie's attack pattern that golden scales don't? Well, the barbos, which is the proper word for chin whiskers of a fish, are the taste buds of bottom dwellers and are used to find food in murky waters. The most common type of fish with barbos are catfish, which tend to be nocturnal and live much much longer than salmon. The longevity factor matches well with the description of a Goldie, something that glowing doesn't. And guess what, dear viewer, the Goldie is also nocturnal. Consider the three waves in which we can find the Goldie, glowflies, gushers, and fog. All three of those waves happen to occur during the nighttime. Glowflies will glow only when the sun is set, and most fog also forms during the night due to the temperature shifts. But what about the gushers? The gusher wave is most likely at nighttime since that is when most salmonids spawn. After all, it's during this wave that we can find a Goldie with 16 plus eggs, and if given enough time that same Goldie will recover health and increase the number of eggs it has. The salmon that are using gushers as hiding spots while they're laying their eggs. Apart from the egg laying part, why else would a Goldie not come out during the day? You can't pin it on it being smart about when it attacks, because during glowflies they just rush at us like there's no tomorrow. Yes, they might be intelligent, but their addiction to glowflies show that self-control is not the reason they only show up at night. All these clues lead me to believe that they are nocturnal. So what does this have to do with the final use of the golden eggs? Well, I believe that Mr. Grizz is running epigenetic experiments on the eggs. Epigenetics is a relatively new field of study, whereby environmental factors can change your gene expression, which in turn would change you. Things such as the food you eat, the music you listen to, and the amount of stress you're under can all change which genes are activated and which are not. MadPat did a pretty good job of explaining how epigenetics work in his recent video on Pokemon evolution, which I'll link below. Given that the Goldie has catfish-like qualities, and that the Zapfish are a type of catfish, it could be possible that Mr. Grizz is trying to engineer a method of turning the Goldies into mini Zapfish. After all, if the Goldie has some genes that are giving it catfish-like qualities, could there be more genes that, when activated, would make the Goldie grow similar to a Zapfish? Consider for example the Zapfish diagram in Schellendorf Institute. Not every Zapfish will turn into a great Zapfish. Something must occur to change the development cycle or gene expression in order for the little round boys to turn into the mitochondria of inkling society. Perhaps things like the composition and quality of the water can impact what the golden eggs and mini zapfish develop into. If kept as a constant power source inside buildings, like they are in Octo Canyon, mini zapfish might remain mini zapfish forever. However, what if instead they were left to grow in a location like Piranha Pit? After all, we see the great zapfish appear in the murky waters of the pit, which makes sense considering it's a type of catfish, and catfish thrive in murky waters. The murky waters of Salmon Run are filled with waste and are green with slime, which could turn a goldie egg into a goldie. 
So it is very much possible that Mr. Grizz is taking the goldie eggs and placing them in different environments to see how they develop. Or if a method for growing them into zapfish or even many zapfish has been found, perhaps they're already being converted into these energy producing fishies. And this brings us back to the two scenarios. Regardless of whether or not the golden egg will develop into a goldie, all of these theories would be possible since Grisco as a company is collecting thousands of eggs. With daily shifts and roughly 50 eggs collected per run, Mr. Grizz has a nearly infinite supply of golden eggs. Given that the Grisco slogan is all about building a better future for Encopolis, I believe that at the very least, the golden eggs are being used to solve the energy crisis. Regardless of whether the mature version of the egg is returned to the salmonids, added to a think tank, or epigenically transformed into a zapfish, collecting golden eggs for Mr. Grizz will bring about some sort of change to Inkling society. As it says in the end of the training manual, we at Grisco Industries are devoted to absolutely everything in our powers to create a brighter future for us all. And thus we're left to wonder, what exactly is Mr. Grizz doing with all these eggs? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I bet he just eats them. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Wait. Yes? Did you mention something about this being a three-part series? Yes I did, and yes it is. Because there's still one huge question left on the table, and that might help us understand the intent behind collecting all these golden eggs. And what will that be? Who is Mr. Grizz?